Galatians chapter 5 is where we're going to be this morning. Galatians chapter 5. Alright, so if you're on the call, please make sure that you have your phones mute so there won't be any background noises. So Galatians chapter 5 is where we're going to be this morning. Galatians chapter 5 this morning. All right, so I've been up, um, man, my my sleep pattern has changed. It has shifted. Um, <laughs> now it's shifted to uh, being dirt tired by 9.30 or something at night. And, I mean, probably zonk by 10, but I'm up like at 2, 2.30. So my um, sleep pattern has shifted. I, and so um, it's a little different now, but the Lord has been ministering to me very strong. I've been listening to uh, a few people, uh, prominent people, and releasing some things that they have been saying into the earth. And so this morning, I'm very strong on what I'm saying. When I say, let the prophet speak, that is my prayer request this morning, to let the prophet speak. There are a lot of um, things that the Lord is speaking into the earth right now. A lot of things that God is speaking into the earth right now. And some of those things are not. Come on down. You're the next contestant on the price is right. It's not that. Um, some of the things are very challenging. Uh, some of the things that he is speaking is speaking will speak directly to us. And it will challenge us in the areas of where we are have fallen into sin in areas where we need to be brought out of sin, all those different areas. So it's like very strong right now. Well, I began to talk to the Lord this morning, even concerning me and the messages that I have. And I'm noticing that they are very strong. He's taking me back to the original place of where he saved me from, which is from the place of deliverance. So my um delivery now is is a lot about deliverance and so um, not for anybody to take it personal because deliverance is a part of all our lives if you think you don't need to be delivered from something then you must be dead because deliverance is a part of all our lives there's something whether it's catching a bad attitude sometime whether it's telling a lie sometime whether you know regardless of what it is it's something that we all could look at to say listen um god deliver me from that right there so this is where the lord has me at and so this morning as i spoke with him the Lord would talk to me because every Tuesday morning I come with a prayer focus, which is the thing that we're bringing before the Lord. And so this morning, what the Lord would say to me, as, I, um, as always, I write it down and he said this to me right here, be done with it, be done with it. That was the thing that the Lord would speak to, spoke to me this morning to talk to y'all about. I'm going to come out of Galatians chapter five again. I'm going to go ahead and throw a warning out here for those of you that listen to me, for those of you that follow me, you're going to hear um, up in the upcoming times, it's going to be a lot of pressing about deliverance. And the reason why is because we are being positioned for uh, some great things that God wants to do. And what happens, what causes us to miss the things is when we are not delivered. Our deliverance is very, very important. It's very vital. I, I was listening to one um, prophet and she was saying, this is not the year. And to be playing with the Lord, this is not the year. I was saying, God, I've been saying that for the longest. I've been I've been hollering that. I've been screaming that it trim. Y'all, this ain't the time. This is not the time. But we have to understand that when things come, they are coming to bring us out. They are not coming to destroy us, but the way we handle it is what determines whether we are brought out of it or whether we are snared by it. So Galatians chapter 5 here, what he says here in verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Then he says, and be not entangled. There's that famous word that's going around the world right now about the 
entanglement. They actually thought that Jada was just trying to make an excuse for what she did, but actually she was telling the divine truth about what happens you do become entangled. To become entangled in something means that it has you wrapped up, you can't get out of it, you're struggling to get free from it, you can know within you that it's not the right thing to do, you can know that it is just not right on, on, on any level, but when it's entanglement, it will keep you locked up in something that you want to be free from. So we are now at a phase where the Lord is talking to us about deliverance. Some of us, he's going to remind us about our deliverance. And some of us, he's going to introduce deliverance to us. So it says, be not entangled again. Entangled again. Notice the terminology that Paul uses. He says, again. So don't you go get back in something that God has brought you out of. Don't you do it over again. Why? Why would he talk to us about not doing it over again? Because anything that you have been delivered from is going to show back up. It may not come back the next day. It may wait a couple of years or what have you, but it is going to come back again because of the familiarity that it has with you. So it is going to come back again. So he tells them again, Galatians 5 and verse 1. He says, stand fast. I want you to hold firmly. Get a grip on. Don't you move. Don't you sway. Make sure that your deliverance is in you enough to the point that you can hold it. Make sure that you are solid enough in it. Don't you just temper, just, just, just teeter-totter or tamper with it, but make sure that you are anchored in it. He says, stand fast. You're going to have to take a stand against it. Remember the scripture that says, uh, resist the devil and he will flee. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Liberty meaning the freedom. It means, it means the peace, the shalom of God. Where with Christ, he gives the indicator of who it is that has made us free. He says, Christ is not liberty in you making yourself free. It's not liberty in your mama making you free, your daddy making you free. But it is liberty or freedom or shalom, whereas Christ has given unto us and free. Free means that he's purchased us from a place of bondage. It is from a place as to where I am a slave to something. I am, I am, I'm, it's nothing that I really want to do, but it's what I find myself doing. So Paul would be the one that could write that because he would be the one that would say that that I don't want to do is what I find myself doing. Why? Because it is sin that lives in me. So you have to be honest about the place that you are. You have to tell the truth about the place where you are, where you reside. You can't lie and pretend to be somewhere that you're not. You need to tell the exact truth. That is the reason why the Lord has to know the exact location of where we are in order to deliver us. He can't deliver us being liars. He can't deliver us saying that we're on Main Street when actually we're really on Covington Avenue. You have to tell the truth, God, I'm here on Main Street and I need some help. I'm lost. You know, I need some help. Could you please send me in the direction of where it is that I need to go? So his, all of this is tied up in this one verse right here. All of that, stand fast. He's giving the position, the authority position that you have to take. You've got to stand fast to mean to be concrete or to be solid. Therefore, for in the liberty, in the shalom, the peace of God, in, in, in the, the Zoe life of God, stand in that liberty where with Christ, who, who's Christ? He's the anointed one. He is the powerful one. He has made us free, free. He has brought us out of the cage. We're no longer enslaved and be not entangled. Entangled means to be caught up, uh, to means to be wrapped up in to something. Be not entangled again. He uses the word again to remind us where the Lord had to bring us from. Don't go back into what used to be. Don't do that. Don't you walk yourself back into it. Be done with it. Remember what the Lord said. Be done with it. Don't go back into it. Be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Please understand that a yoke is something that is around your neck, which means that it is going 
to carry you in the direction of where it wants to carry you. He calls it a yoke of bondage, which means that the yoke is to enslave you. It is to hold you captive. It is to keep you caught up into something as to where you are not able to make conscious decisions as to where all decisions are made by this yoke. So you go in the direction as to where this yoke wants you to go. You don't have any decision. You're not decisive about what goes on and what happens because this yoke is what takes you in the direction. So the Lord said this morning to remind us to be done with it. There are some things in our life that we need to decree and we need to make a decision to be done with it. But how am I going to be done with it? I'm going to have to do as Romans 10 and 13 says. It says they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is going to take the name of the Lord wherewith Paul had said here that Christ, it is going to take Christ in order to be be free from it. So let me go ahead and tell y'all this to help you understand. Anything, any part of sin that I am in, I am not in Christ. If I am in sin, I am not in Christ. That part of my life, I have not invited Christ to be a part of. I could lie all day long, but I have not allowed Christ to be a part of any area of Delphine's life that she is caught up in any type of sin. He's not a part of that. He's not a promoter of sin. He's not a congratulator of sin. He is not. And so I can't say that he's a part of that. And so it says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved is to be rescued. They shall be saved. Rescued from what? From that place of bondage. From that yoke of bondage is to be brought out from that yoke. And so therefore, I can't say that Christ is a part of something that is it totally contrary to what it is that Christ stands for. That part there is the part that I need to call on his name in order for him to subdue. So if you are in a situation as to where you don't struggle with certain things where there's really no need to call for Christ in that area because that area has been subdued. But now if there is an area as to where there is a struggle, then that is the area where he says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is going to take Christ. There are some things that we struggle with in life that it is going to take Christ. If you see that there is something that you just cannot stop, you can't shake on your own, then it is going to be something that is going to require Christ. And so back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 2, Paul says, Behold, I I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, then Christ shall profit you nothing. What he's saying is, is if you live according to the law, the circumcision was according to the law. So if you live according to your own way, if you set your own agenda as it relates to deliverance, if you sit there and think, well, you know, I'm I'm going to quit. I'm going to get myself together. If you rely on your own strength to do it, then he says Christ shall profit you nothing. Because what he's trying to let them know is, is if it could be done, then you would have been done it. If it was something that you could do on your own, you would have been mastered it. So you can't master it on your own. He says, if you... I'm going to say unto you that if you be circumcised, so circumcision is the cutting away. So if you take the initiative to do the cutting away of something, Christ shall profit you nothing. Okay, let me explain that a little bit further. If you ever seen a situation where you may be yourself or have encountered someone that would attempt to stop something on their own and could only stop it temporarily, that's what Paul was trying to say. You're only going to be able to stop it temporarily. You may not do it for a couple of days. You may not do it for a week or what have you, but you will find yourself doing it again. Why? Because the power that we need to subdue it does not live inside of us. The power that we need in order to fully quit it is in Christ. So if I'm not in Christ, then I cannot declare that I have been saved or I have been rescued. So Paul said it will profit you nothing. In other words, it's going to make a spectacle out of you because 
because it is going to clearly show that it was you doing it yourself without the power of Christ helping you or assisting you to do it. Verse 3, he says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. He says, look, you're not going to be able to say that you're only going to do a portion of it. No, it is going to hold.